Hello and welcome to the Hockey Good Game. It's just finished. West Ham 2, Leicester 3. Gonzo, three minutes in, 1 0 down. Yeah, pretty depressing to be honest with you. They swung that ball over. It's one of those ones where they intend it to be a cross. It avoids everybody and ends up in the goal. Clearly, because of the screens in the stadium, they didn't show us a replay because they didn't want to antagonise everybody even further. But that's how it looked to me. Very, very unlucky to be 1 0 down. Was it a couple of minutes? Yeah. You touch it, it's a goal. You don't touch it, it's a goal. Well, I think um, I was watching it and it almost happened in slow motion. I was kind of watching I thought, hang on a minute, is someone going to put a foot, put their laces through that? And then it bounced and I thought, hang on, is Randolph going to make an effort to get to the ball? And it just all happened in slow motion before you know it. There's 4,000 Leicester fans going ballistic to my left. So, yeah, I, I just think there was half a dozen players at blame for that because just, they just didn't do their jobs. I think it was a bit of good play by Mares. I think we shouldn't underestimate that cross. If Snodgrass could whip it in like that, we'd be laughing, but he can't. And, well, three minutes later, the 4,000 Leicester fans were singing again. But this time, it wasn't about good play. Well, it was good play by Leicester. It was a training ground move. But what were our defence doing, Tony? I still can't work it out. Um, they're probably still thinking about it now, I'm sure they're. I'd like to think they're discussing it in the dressing room as we speak. Uh, and I'd like to think they haven't all buggered off home. Um, I'd like to think that's being addressed. I'd like to think that um, Slav is going to address that in training next time around because basically um, it's just fundamentally simple stuff. You're standing there watching the ball. Um, no one really made an effort to, to, to get to the ball and they were looking at each other, weren't they? But so. they're probably still standing there right now looking around at each other thinking who's marking Robert Hoof. <laughs> but, but the thing is, Tony, this is, this is March. Mm. This isn't anything new. This isn't the first time it's happened. No. We were like statues for that second goal. Leicester did a basic, it wasn't basic, it was a well-worked training ground yeah. move. Credit to Leicester, but we made it easy for them. We literally stood there and watched them pass it about, pass it down the side, yeah. cross it in, and watched Robert Hooth, the one man you mark, get a free header. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we were saying at the beginning of the game, um, there can be excuses at the start of the season. Um, we had it obvious you know, issues, um, there was a new stadium. At the time, we didn't realise that there was an issue with Payet in the squad. Um, all of that's kind of, you know, gone now. Uh, and we should be moving on. We're safe mid-table. There's just no excuses um, for that level of ineptitude. It's just very, very poor. A bit slightly happier though, Gonzo. Finally, we got a goal in the first half in front of us. What a goal it was from Lanzini, that free kick. Oh, yeah, good one. Really, really good. Showed that there was someone else in the team that could take a free kick. A Aside from he who shall not be mentioned, who Tone just mentioned. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was a beautiful free kick and we deserved to be in it at that point. I mean, the, the, the two early goals were a sucker punch, really. You wouldn't say that Leicester were dominating at that point. The first goal was gone. But the game was over after six minutes. We all knew, I think the whole crowd knew after six minutes the game was over. We weren't scoring three, I don't think. I, don't, I think I, on the sixth minute, I don't think anyone thought, you know what, we'll score three, it's all right. I well, thought the belief was gone. I noticed that, I mean, certainly between us where we were set, um, it kind of knocked some of the seriousness out of the game. We were kind of almost, you know, I hate to say it, but almost joking and laughing about how bad it was. It. Because, because, yeah. we're, because we're almost used to it. Almost we're almost used to sort of losing yeah. or conceding sucker punch goals yeah. that almost you laugh. And it's not it's not because you find it funny. It, you're laughing because you're almost saying, well, well this, this, this old, that old chestnut again. I think that's what was happening in Absolutely. there. Yeah. Yep. Then, so. it was, then it was 3-1. It was 3-1. Um, I missed it. Gonzo missed it. Did you see it? it was a cross and then a header? And I, game over I, again just before half time. I didn't see it properly. I just caught it in the corner of my eye. Um, but it looked like statues again. I'd like, I need to see it again though. So it looked like statues again to me. Yeah, well, none of us seen it. But Gonzo, 3 1 down at half time. I mean, this is, this is the 11 everyone wanted to see. Not everyone, but the general consensus. Byron right back, Kiati centre midfield, IU mm. started. Village did what majority of West Ham fans wanted and is it just unlucky that come the sixth minute we're 2 nil down or is it a case of just pure incompetence by the players on the pitch or is it Bilic I mean who do you who are you blaming for this one well well, well both it, it's unlucky and it's incompetent if if you like you're right on both counts because you're right it was the team that everyone wanted to see so did he switch it in midfield yes did we get dominated in midfield no we did not get dominated in midfield that's not what happened out there today did the right back switch work? No, it didn't. Um, clearly, he's been playing Nordvite, Kiate, 
Antonio there for a reason because, and I'll say this now, and it does, you know, it pains me to say it, Byram's really not up to it. He does not look like a Premier League standard right back. Now, you may make mitigation, you may well turn around and say, well, he doesn't have the necessary support, the necessary structure around him, but to me, that's what it looks like. We desperately need a right back, have done for the last 18 months. But in terms of the rest, are you in sort of noble out? Obiang, and we hope he's okay, of course, in the middle um, with Kiate. It looked okay. I mean, there were times where we looked like we were dominating today. They were, they were sucker punches, um, but badly timed, and we, we haven't got a lot of credit in the bank to take sucker punches because we're mid table and now we're sliding down it. I think Byron looked okay today, actually. I don't think he did anything wrong as such, but the only problem was he didn't get tested because Leicester scored two in the first six minutes and sat in their own 18 yarder. And they knew they, they they knew they would get a third at some point, whether it's through us ballsing up or well, actually just through us ballsing up at some point in defence. They knew they would get a third goal, and they got it. But we we eventually made it two, Tony. Um, Andre Ayew again, the guy in form, but he got his start, he got his goal. Yeah, yeah. But let's t let's talk about the game overall. I mean, there's no point talking about how it's we know the score, but what's is Billich done, Tony, or can he come back from this? I mean, we play Hull next. We've got an international break to stew over this, right? But we play Hull, who are... They got thumped today, I think. But yeah, the thing is, yeah. the thing is, though, they're fighting. They are yeah. fighting. Well, OK, so... I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I've been a pro-Billich person um, from day one, pretty much. Um, so we were talking before about the whole issue with the stadium start of the season, the issue with he shows, who shall not be named. Um, who I've already named, but I won't name him again. Um, <laughs> so, um, so we had those issues, but they, they can't be used as an excuse anymore. Um, he made the changes today that most people wanted. We, we were all agreed at that at the start of the game. But the problems today had nothing to do with a lineup. It had nothing to do with the fact that whether it was Byron at right back or whether Kuyati was at right back. These are just 11 professionals falling, to, falling asleep at the start of the game. They're just gifting. Um, schoolboy goals. That's the problem. So it's nothing to do with the, the. It's just you know. But but that unfortunately also falls on. That's Billish's remit. He he has to get the players ready. Um, but regarding his future, that's a tough one to call at the moment. I, I'd like to think that he learns from his mistakes. But then I've been saying that since September. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it's it's for me. It's in the balance. It's fifty fifty at the moment. I regarding what he's got left in the bank. I think he's got two or three more games, but if we lose the next two, um, then you're going to start getting some real unrest in the stadium, I think. Is it because he picked the first 11 as he did and he did the changes, do you think that sort of gives him a little gift token, as in, well, today's defeat is not your fault because you did what everyone wanted? Well, I mean, let's, let's, that's a really good point. Let's not lose sight of the fact that we lost um, Reid and Obiang today. And I said to um, uh, Chris during the game, um, you know, um, every time someone goes down, it seems to be one of our best players. We don't lose bad players. We seem to lose good players every single time. So we spent, I don't know what minute Obiang went off. Um, it was second half, second half sometime. Second and Reid we lost after 10, 15 minutes. So that's two majorly important players for us. So, yeah, I suppose from that perspective, um, Slav, you can cut him a bit of slack there. So Could it be argued, though, Gonzo, um that those changes actually enforced Slav to make positive changes because he did do positive for me. He made positive yeah. subs off both injuries. And actually, I actually think if those subs were not a blessing in disguise because Tony said we've just lost two very important players. Reed's gone off with an injury we've seen last week, so it looks like it's a proper injury. And Obian got stretched off and went straight down the tunnel. That's not good to see. But <laughs> I think if they never went off, Slav would never have put Kiati centre back, Lanzini centre back, and brought an attacker if he'd got on. Not in the first half anyway, and I don't think he would have took Fernandez on for Obian. So I almost think that the, the, the changes were positive, but they were forced. Yeah, but you're quite right. But he deserves some credit. I mean, let's be fair. I've been criticising him for the past two weeks, so let's give him credit for that. It would have been easy, particularly as Ginge was warming up, for him to take Reed off and pop Ginge on. And he didn't. He actually you know, lost one defender and took an attacking player. So he put Snodgrass on. Personally, I'm not impressed with Snodgrass since he signed, but it was an attacking move. Whether you think it, he's a decent player or you don't think he's a, a decent player, it was an attacking move. Fernandez, as you say, is probably slightly more attacking than Obiang is, but they are they are big players for us, as Tony said, and we've probably got three players who would not look out of place in teams higher up the table than us, and that is Lanzini, Antonio, and Winston Reid. So to lose Winston Reid was a big hit but we had already conceded two goals by the time that we lost him of course but 
he did what he needed to do. Bilic needs to do it. In answer to your question to Tony, which basically suggested he made the changes that he needed to make. If he hadn't made those changes, he'd have stuck with the same team as Bournemouth and we'd have lost. Criticism would have been harsh. Okay, He's made those changes and we've still lost. At least people are saying, well, hold on, Bilic has got the ability to change. He's, he's, he's got a certain amount of flexibility that buys him some time. But does he have the ability to motivate, which is what Tony's questioning, because he picked the right 11. They weren't up for it today. I think we played quite well and I think we were unlucky. But at no point did I see anyone flying in with a 50-50. At no point did I see us winning that many balls in the air when they were up against. Apart from Andy Carroll, I've rarely seen us commit a foul. And I don't want to see us committing fouls. But if you're committing fouls, it means you're, generally means you're flying in on a 50-50. You're not giving up. And there was a couple of them. I think it was... Are you crunched Callum, or Kazaki? Sorry, Callum's waiting. Callum's waiting with a pint of beer to give it to um, just what we are. I think I think it was I think it was Bayern or Ayu went in on Okazaki when Okazaki was on the deck, Ayu went in on. And that's what I want to see. I want to see a bit of heart, a bit of passion. And today I thought they would stand up for their manager and their captain. I thought the fact that no ball he was on the pitch today, that's what most people want to see. But the fact is our captain has been here for two decades, feels he has to take a week away from our football club because of the fans is quite for me as a football fan, as a West Ham fan, it's quite a low point that our captain feels like, and our manager feels like the captain should take a break from the club. And I felt like today they had their chance to step up and say, we're behind Slav and Mark. And although we're unlucky in the second half, but I'm not quite convinced the heart and fires are... Do you think maybe they think that, is it summer holiday time? Do you know that? Do you know that? myth that we're on the beach already I mean should, we're only nine points clear now should we be well I mean we had a really tough t- uh, start to the season um, we dug ourselves out of that played some you know we got some good wins in um, for a while we were talking about eighth place I, I was myself I, <laughs> seem, I seem to remember saying that if we were able to hit eighth place this season it would be a better achievement than seventh place last season taking into account the amount of uh, excrement that was fr- thrown in our direction from the press from it's about everybody um, you know, London Mayor, um, just about everyone seemed to be lining up to kick us. Um, so we got up to that kind of, you know, that, that, that position in the table. And since then, it's, I think you're right, there, there's a, there, is a, there, is a, there is a feeling of, um, there is a kind of a, a, a look of, um, oh, let's get the season out, out of the way. It's, um, we've, we've done okay, we're, we're safe, although, as you said, we're not safe yet. But uh, they're, they're, playing, they're playing like a team that believe they're safe. They're playing like a team that seems to think, OK, we've, we've done enough now. And there, there, is, a, there is a certain lethargy. Um, for about 20, 25 minutes in that second half, they, we looked like the, se- the team from last season. Um, but only for, but you, can't, you, know, you can't win football matches playing, turning up for 25 minutes, 20, you know, half an hour in a game. So. I think today is a unique situation, though, because the game was 2-0 down after six minutes. It's quite unique, yeah. that, in the Premier League. Even, even as terrible as our season's been, I don't think we've been 2-0 down after six minutes before. And like we said, I think the first one was just good play by Leicester. The second one, there was no excuse for that. But after six minutes, the game plan's out the window. It's a case of whatever we've trained all week on is gone. There's no, like, you put a light to that team sheet we wrote out because it's gone. Reid goes off. You know, your plan B is out the window. Biang's off. Plan C is out the window. We're now on to plan D, which is launch it to Andy yeah. Cardle a little bit. And, you know, but Gonzo, like, let's start wrapping this up. How are you feeling right now? Are you angry or do you sympathise with Bilic? Do you feel we were just a bit unlucky and we move on to the hall one? Do you sort of move the pressure from one to the other? You're not, no pressure's off, but there's no added pressure. Where are you? Where are you sitting? How's your feelings? Okay, firstly, there's big pressure on Bilic still. He did not relieve the pressure. He did the right thing by changing the team, but he still lost. So there's big pressure on Bilic. The eyes of the fans are upon him. The eyes of the board are certainly upon him. We peppered their goal. At the last, um, the last half an hour, I would say we were really going, and we were quite unlucky. There was rebounds, there was deflections. We had a right old pop at them. Um, just, to, just to add quickly, there was a chance at the end for Andy Carlo, but where we sit, Snodgrass took that free kick, it hit the wall, and all of a sudden it kind of bounced mm. away, and everyone was like, "Oh!" But we, where we sit, we couldn't see beyond the wall. But it sounds like Andy Carlo smashed <laughs> it, and Casemiro Schmeichel pulled off a bit of a world. Oh, I, 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 sh- I should also say that there looked to be an opportunity where Antonio, again, it's at the the opposite end to where we sit. It looked like Antonio played Ayu through and Ayu was very, very close to the goal. We'd have to look and it looked like he skied it very, very high over. But we were right, having a right go at him. In terms of what you said about Bilic not being able to motivate the players, well, I bloody hope you're wrong. 
let's let's be clear because I think Bilic is quite poor tactically. I think in terms of fitness, he's quite poor tactically. Where I think Bilic excels is his motivation of the players. I think he is a motivator. I think players like him. I think he's a good character. He's a nice man, and players want to play for him. If he is not able to mo motivate them, then we are in big big trouble. The question is, Lagonzo, in the first half, take Lanzini's free kick out of the equation. Can you remember Schmeichel having to move? The first half is in front of us, so we've got no excuses. None of this, we couldn't see it. It's in front of us. Did Schmeichel have to move in the first half? Bear in mind, we were 2 0 down after six minutes, so for 40 minutes, we were 2 0 down. Schmeichel's in front of us. Apart from that free kick, did Kashmir Schmeichel, from your memory, have to even budge? No, but there's a very good reason for that, and that is that Andy Carroll is not fit, and we need a mobile striker. We are lacking a mobile striker. I can see that I'm not some expert tech. We speak on video all the time, but I'm just not. I'm not, you know, for, oh, hello. <laughs> We've got a levitating table. Uh, the spirits are with us today. Um, I think if I was, then I'd know a lot more about the game. But I can tell we need a mobile and athletic striker. We don't have one, and that's why we didn't pepper their goal. I never thought at any point we were outclassed. Two early sucker goals. But no, in answer to your question, we did not trouble Casper Schmeichel. What about yourself, Tony? How are you feeling? Let's wrap this up. Your final thoughts on the game? Um, okay, so frustrating. Um, I believe we were worthy of at least a point, um, possibly four, th uh, three, but um, four. four. Yeah, that's that's, that's pushing it out a bit, mate. No, no, it's my f f fourth one. That is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't even put it in it. Um, no, no. I think we, I, I think we, we, we were good for a, at least a point today. Um, but I, I agree with Chris. I think, um, I think, I just think that uh, I think Slav. I, one of his key strengths I've always had him down for is a motivator. I think the players do seem to like him, but um, but there, there is something missing at the moment, and there, there is a lack of motivation. And, um, and and as Chris said, if he if he can't address that, then you know, as I say, he's not a master tactician. But I do agree about the the, the issues with the the, the striker situation, um, and I'm starting to think, you know, I've, I've kind of been weighing the two up the whole all of this season. Who's who's more to blame? Is it our manager or is it our board? Well, you know, we've had major issues in the transfer market. We've all known about for 18 months. They haven't been addressed. So, are where we are in the in the table? Uh, is it kind of um, true. true? Are we in a true position? Is Slav underachieving, overachieving? So, if you go through our squad and compare it to the teams around us, are we kind of roughly where we should be? In that case, we overachieved last season, but Slav's kind of doing okay this season. And it's our board that needs to kick up the arse and needs to do more. Or, are, or is our squad better than that? Should we be pushing for eighth place? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, look, I look at West Brom today. Did they beat Arsenal today? They were 3-1 up. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah, they did, yeah. So, I mean, they're like... But that was us last season. That was us last season. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that we... I, I saw West Brom over here when, when we should have beat them. I thought they were really poor. And yet they're beating teams. And you look at their squads. And this is, an, this is a manager who, who is often ridiculed and derided dinosaur. as a dinosaur. Um, so, I mean, what does that tell us? I don't know. Uh, so I'm kind of like neither here nor there. I don't really know. I'm, 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 I'm no expert. But clearly, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now if they had have invested properly and done their jobs. That's the way I see it. I, I think the first goal was a good play by Leicester. I think we can get too strong on defensive. I think you just got to say credit to Mares. That cross was perfection. Someone touches it, it could go in. No one touches it, it's a goal. Uh, but the second one, there's just no excuses. Everyone's standing still. All the, oh, where we sat, we're at the end pitch, but it just felt like all the Leicester players were moving. Every West Ham player just stood there watching the ball, watched it come over and watched it, and they didn't move until Randolph was picking out the net. And I just thought, what the hell is going on? That's nothing to do with Billich's tactics. That's players just standing still. That's as, It's as simple as that. Yeah. But... I thought we were almost good. I kept saying to you two during the game, we're going to win this because I felt like the fans were up for it a little bit. I thought I felt the fans were going, come on, we just win. We just win. But we didn't trouble them enough. And, and Leicester still, this is how Leicester won the league. Score, sit back, let you come at them and counter-attack. And they had that counter-attack at the end when Slomani was one-on-one. -on -one. Randolph, good save. But too often we were attacking today. We were under no pressure. We were messing up. Snodgrass went to lay Byram off at one point. There was no one around him. The, the layoff was so bad. Byram took about four touches and had to turn back yeah. on him. I just so thought, can, I, can I just say, sorry, I'm glad you brought it out. That's a weak side for us. Tony mentioned it during the game. Byram and Snodgrass on the same side. Those are not 
that is not a, not in a Premier League two players that you want to shore up a, a, a side in a Premier League. Devil's match. advocate. This is why Bayern should be playing so he gets to know Snodgrass. That's the, probably the first time they've played together. If, if they're if they're both playing together for us next season, I'll be very very surprised. Snodgrass Snodgrass was getting assists and goals for Hull. He's not getting assists and goals for us now. Byram, you can see why we need another right back. I'm sorry to say that. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot of play like that that like, wound me up today. Too often we were running into brick walls. Robert Hooth was standing there and people were running into him with the ball. It's Robert Hooth. You're not going to get through him. Pass the ball. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. you know something? I felt we were unlucky. I felt I felt we played all right, actually. In the second half, I thought we were... I, I, like I said to you two during the second half, we're going to win this because yeah, yeah. Leicester were just in their own box. But the problem is Leicester were saying, what have you got? And we just didn't have the answers today. And it's been the same all season. And I think, to be honest with you, I'm still pro Slav. I don't want Slav out. Even if we finish 16th or something, I don't want him gone. I think fans, board, manager of players, let's just get the season over and done with ASAP, wipe the slate clean, and we go again, starting with the transfer window, proper investment, proper players. None of this loan business. You either back a player and you buy him, or you don't back him and you do what you do with Scott Hogan. No, we're not going to buy him. Piss off. None of this loan shit. We've got Torrey, Zaza, it just doesn't work. And, you know, I think we, I, we've all failed this season. The board's failed. The manager's failed. The players have failed. I think the fans to an extent have failed. I think Mario noble has got a point. Failed. Yes, <laughs> I failed. We've all failed. You know, yeah, I, think, I think we've all failed today. Uh, uh, okay, and, and I just think we need this slate to be wiped clean and we start again. We just put it down to a horror season and we go again. Because if we don't, we're always going to be doing these reviews. Who do we blame? Billet sure the yeah, players. Who yeah. do? And it's not good for anyone. It's not good for Slack. Because if we're doing it, the board's doing it. If the board's doing it, the oh, players are doing it. The, the players are doing it. Yeah. Billet's so, is doing okay, it. So, so talking, talking, let's go back to the board quickly. Um, so is this down to them just not wanting to spend enough money? Or is this also down to the fact that they've got people that are supposed to be doing their jobs and they're not doing their jobs very well? Or is it both? I don't know. Um, I, I, I think that this season... Um, Everybody in that department in, in, in the summer needs to put in a kind of career-defining effort, right? Because I think there's a lot of people within the club that are escaping criticism that aren't doing their jobs properly. Um, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know who the scouts are. I don't know who they are, what their remit is, how their bonuses are measured as to what their performance is. But, you know, it's... It's, it's, it's everything, though. It's everything. It's, it's like the season ticket renewals. They, they announced stuff 9 in the morning. Come 12 o'clock, they changed two things. Who's making these decisions? They balls simple things like that yeah, up again. Yeah. It's not just the board. The board won't decide things like that. It would be someone that's paid a lot of money to make these executive decisions. Financial experts. They might be a financial expert, but they're not a fucking West Ham fan expert. Yeah, and that's yeah. what's pr starting to piss me off a little bit right, today. Right. But listen, we need to wrap this up. Um, Tony, is there anyone from the game that come out good for you or sort of you didn't play very well. You need to be dropped from the next game. Very easy. Um, good Antonio Lanzini. I thought um, they just they looked a class above everybody else. Um, just a quick note, actually. So Antonio came over to all of the fans, um, took off his shirt, was the only West Ham player that did it, um, and got, got a rousing standing ovation. Standing ovation. Um, is that indicative of anything? I hope not. Um, I'm hoping it's just the fact that he was showing that he was a guy that actually gave a toss. I think I think so. by them did half and half. But he then came a little to, bit over. A bit I, I think he was scared. I think he was scared of what the reception when he was going to. They scared. were the only two players that yeah. stayed on the pitch. The, yeah. the other yeah. nine buggered off down that yeah. tunnel, yeah. the yeah. SAP. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go on to worry about yourself. Anyone with a thumbs up or anyone with a thumbs down you'd like to highlight? I'll just echo what Tone said, but let's be very, very clear. It is got to be an intimidating thing to do when you know you've lost, when you know you've not got the result. All the fans want to walk up to 50 odd thousand fans. Um, but, and so that, that is fair play but, to, to Antonio but for Antonio doing that. knew he'd put a shift in so he could walk out there with his head held high I, I, and say, I, I, you know I, what, I've done 100%. And, 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 and the rest of them can bug it off because they, they probably yeah. don't believe they've given yeah, 100%. Yeah. And when he took his shirt off, not only did he have a ripped torso reminiscent of mine, uh, right? Right. 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 But he also was all much like me. He was bandaged up, so he was making. You know, you thought, hold on, you've got, you've got a shoulder injury. Uh, along with Obiang and, and Reed, that's our three main players this season. And two have stretched, but two he, injured, he's and one. Play through the injury, and I thought, do you know what? Fair play to him, and he comes out with a lot of credit after that. Um, to, 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 Tony. Tone is there with his um, Inspector Clouseau um, coat on, so he's he's um, 
it, it's been a good, nice debut from Tone. Everyone knows what else I think about Bilic and all the rest of it. So, yeah. I think Masuaku did okay when he came on, actually. I thought it was a brave call by Slab, yeah, changing yeah. the left back. I thought he, I thought Creswell's crossing was a bit off again today. Masuaku come on. I thought that was a good thing to do because Creswell was, was getting a lot of crosses to put in, but they weren't happening. And I thought that was the right call. I thought Masuaku did okay. But the problem is we had two forced subs on Slav. But the two players that come on, I thought Snodgrass didn't do well, but I thought Kiati did well at centre-back. I thought Lanzini did really well at centre-mid. Um, unfortunately, the winger just didn't work out. But Slav just didn't have the options on the bench, I don't think. Who did he bring on? Snodgrass or Faguli? You know, it's not... It's, it's yeah. not the biggest. For, for yeah. is the answer. It's, it's, it's not the, but it's hindsight. Yeah, it? yeah, At the yeah. time, I would have took on Snog, and I think most of the people would. But anyway, that's it from us. Hit the subscribe button while you're there. Gone just done a vlog. It'll be up on our channel tomorrow morning. Thanks for joining us. We've got still got a couple of videos coming out next week, despite the international bait. A couple of one-offs. Um, so don't miss them. Hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you later.